there! My name is Allison and I'm so excited that you are thinking about learning to play the flute. I love teaching the flute. I love playing the flute. I started playing the flute myself when I was in the fourth grade. So I was eight, almost nine years old when I started playing. So maybe you're about that age, maybe you're a little bit older, or maybe you're even a lot older. Maybe you're an adult trying this out for the first time, which is fantastic. I know you're gonna have a lot of fun with music and with the flute. I've been teaching and playing professionally for about 28 years now. I live and work in the Eastern North Carolina area. So if you're in the area, um, I'm in Greenville. So if you're within a commutable distance to Greenville, in-person lessons are always an option. If you're a little farther away, I'd love to meet with you online as well. Kind of like we're doing right now, except you'll be able to play for me as well as me play for you. So let's get started. Most of my beginners prefer to start out sitting down. So we're gonna talk about how to sit when you play the flute. I know you probably never thought that you had to be taught how to sit. We've been doing that a long time, right? But there's a special way you want to sit to play the flute for the best tone quality possible. So I'm gonna take my chair behind me and I'm not gonna sit all the way back. I'm gonna sit on the edge so that my feet are flat on the floor and helping to support my upper body. My back should be straight but relaxed. My shoulders should be just hanging loose comfortably by my side. So be careful not to hunch your shoulders. A lot of flutists like to do this once they start holding the flute, but keep your shoulders away from your ears. So shoulders away from your ears, Feet flat on the floor, back straight, sitting on the edge of your chair. So straight, but relaxed. That's a good thing to remember, straight, but relaxed. You'll notice that I've started without the flute just to get used to how I'm sitting. It's probably not, not how you sit at the dinner table or when you sit down to relax. The next thing I'm gonna show you are the different parts of the flute. If you open your flute case, you will notice that there are three parts to the flute. This part is called the head joint. That's the part we're going to start out with in just a moment. The other two parts we'll get to in a later lesson. The longest part is called the body of the flute. And then just like we have a foot on the bottom of our body, the last and shortest part of the flute is called the foot joint. So I'm going to start by taking just my head joint out right now. Before we jump right in and start blowing on the head joint, we're going to talk about articulation or tonguing on the flute. Every sound that you'll make initially will start with your tongue. And this is actually pretty easy to do. I want you to imagine that you have a piece of rice stuck on just the very tip of your tongue and you need to spit that grain of rice across the room. Try it with me a few times. Your tongue will come right between your lips. You can see it poking through a little bit. And you can try blowing for a little bit longer, which you would not do if you were actually spitting some rice out. Try that with me a few times. So you're gonna spit and blow. Okay. So tonguing is called articulation and it's a very 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 important part of playing any wind instrument the flute included so remember when we start with our head joint that every sound we make we're going to start with our tongue just like spitting rice when you place the head joint on your lip first thing to know is the longer part 
is going to po point out to your right. It's so like this, it's backwards. So longest part out to your right, and you're going to put your right hand next to your cheek, next to your chin, because we don't want to press it into our face. That's going to set us up for some bad habits later on. So hand like you're going to wave next to your face. You can balance the end a little bit if you want, just with some fingers, but you can probably do this. Most of my students feel a little bit better with their fingers on this top part called the crown of the head joint. So that's a good idea to do. Now I'm not going to cover the entire hole. You're gonna rest the hole right where the red part of your lip meets your upper chin, meets your regular skin. So right on that line between your lip and your chin. Again, I don't want to press. I just lightly rest it there. And you'll see that my bottom lip is covering about a third to half of the hole. So I'm going to try spitting my rice now. A few short tones. if you don't get a sound the very first time. I'll tell you a secret. My very first flute lesson, back when I was that fourth grader, I didn't get a single sound out the whole first lesson. I went home, I practiced it, and I practiced it some more, and I practiced it some more, and finally I could get a few sounds out some of the time, and then I could get a sound out most of the time, and then I finally could get a sound out all of the time. So try it with me. You will find it very helpful to look in a mirror so that you can see exactly where you are placing the head joint on your lower lip. After a while, you won't have to look anymore. But when you're starting out, it's totally okay to look. So let's check. Just a little bit of that hole covered. And then we're going to try a few short tones like we're spitting rice. Let's do four tones together. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. Let's put all four together. One, two, ready, go. How'd you do? Some sounds? No sounds at all? Got sounds all four times? Whatever you got that first try, whether you got the sound out all four times or whether your sound still maybe sounds like this, that's okay. It's gonna take a little bit of experimentation and a lot of practice to get that sound out consistently. So if it didn't come out on your first try, don't be discouraged. Remember, my whole first flute lesson, not a single sound, not even one. So let's try it one more time, four short sounds. Take a second, check and make sure the head joint looks good. So check in that mirror. Here we go. Four short sounds. One, two, Ready, breathe. Awesome. You may want to pause this video now and try it a little bit on your own if some of the sounds are coming out or it's not coming out at all yet. Go ahead and pause the video or rewind it and keep practicing those short sounds before we go on to a slightly longer sounds. So I want to work up to first 
holding a note or a tone for two beats. Then I'm gonna try for four beats, six, eight, and so on. You get the idea. So I'm gonna show you how, and then we're gonna try it together. I'm gonna check and make sure that it looks good and looks like it did when I got my four short sounds out. Here's two beats. One, two, one, two. So in my head I was counting one, two, one, two. Try it with me. One, two, ready, breathe. Let's try another one. One, two, ready, breathe. Let's try four tones, two beats each. One, two, ready, go. some of those came out for you. If it sounded a little airy or a lot airy, again, that's okay. Double check that placement. Most of the time, if you're not getting any sound out at all, either you're not covering any of the hole. So when I'm blowing right now, none of the air is actually going down into the tube. So no air in the tube, no sound. Or I'm covering too much of the hole, so all of my air, again, is not going into the tube, it's going right over. Or I'm covering too much of the hole. So I'm getting a little bit of sound there. But it doesn't sound great. So again, covering just the right amount of the hole, about a third of the hole, is gonna give you that best, best sound. All right. If you wanna pause the video and try it on your own, you can. Otherwise, let's try some four beat long tones, otherwise known as whole notes. When we get into reading music, you'll learn that a whole note gets four beats. So here is my steady beat. One, two, three, four. One more time. One, two, three, four. Let's go on to six beats. So we're making the notes a little bit longer. Counting the same way. Always breathe on that last beat. Nice relaxed breath. Try not to gasp. Not <gasps> Nice relaxed breath, but really inflating your lungs. Imagine your lungs are big balloons that you're trying to blow up quickly. This is one of the reasons if I'm sitting down, I need to make sure that my back is straight so that my lungs don't get all crunched up. If you are hunched over or slouched against the back of your chair, your rib cage is actually gonna cut into your lung capacity a little bit. And at the very best, it's gonna be uncomfortable to take a really big breath. And at the very worst, you're not gonna be able to take a full breath. So I'm gonna try it sitting down for 
a few times for those of you who might be trying this sitting down. So again, my feet are flat on the floor, sitting on the edge of my chair, keeping my shoulders away from my ears, shoulders down and relaxed. Lip is covering just about a third of the hole. You can go ahead and check that in your mirror if you need to. Okay, six beats this time. Breathe with me. One, two, three, four, five. Breathe. also very very common remember that the hole between our lips called the aperture needs to stay very small you might like to imagine that you are trying to blow through one of those little tiny skinny coffee stir straws it's about the size opening that you want if you're running out of air really really quickly chances are that aperture is just a little too big still and for some people, it takes some time for the muscles around your mouth to develop enough so that you can keep that nice small aperture focused. So focused aperture. While we're talking about our aperture, the other word that you'll hear me say a lot, as well as other wind players say this word a lot too, is a French word, embouchure. Embouchure. Embouchure just refers to the general way that we put our mouth when we play. So when I form my lips against the head joint, against that lip plate, I am making an embouchure. Embouchures are different between flute and clarinet or saxophone and trumpet. There's a correct embouchure for each instrument. So embouchure is just the general way we put our lips when we're playing. The aperture refers to the actual opening, the hole between our lips. So that aperture needs to stay pretty small for a flute. If you think about it, we're not blowing at a really big area. It's kind of like trying to shoot and hit a really small target. So again, totally okay if this takes a lot of practice for you. Let's try going eight beats. If you're still working on getting six beats all in one breath, that's okay. You can pause the video and work on those six beat long notes for a little bit longer. For now, if you feel like you're ready, let's try some eight beat long notes. So take your time, position the head joint exactly the way it needs to be on your lip. After a while, you won't have to look anymore. It will just feel right to you. But for now, I do expect that you'll probably have to peek at that mirror every time you put the head joint up to your lip until you just know that it feels right. That takes a little while. Okay, eight beats. Don't forget, start the note with your tongue. We're gonna to tongue every note. I'm gonna do one eight beat long note, and then I'm gonna have you try one long. before we start. Nice, big, relaxed breath. One, two, ready, breathe. Gets a little harder the longer the notes get. Let's try that one more time. One, two, ready, breathe. Well with that, absolutely 
to go ahead and challenge yourself to 10 beats, 12 beats, 14. See how long you can go and sustain that pitch before you breathe. All right. So hopefully you are off to a great first practice session. On your own, go back, practice those short tones again, and then gradually increase the length that you are able to play those tones. Now, when you get ready to finish your lesson or you're finished practicing for the day, very, very important to take good care of your flute. If we don't take care of our flutes properly, they need more maintenance, they end up in the shop, and if your instrument is in the repair shop, you're not going to be able to practice. Also, you might not even realize right away, especially when you first start playing, if your flute isn't functioning properly, you might not realize that it's the flute and not you. So it's really, really important that we keep our flute in great playing position. So I'm not going to just pop my head joint back in the case and pop it shut. That's a no-no. In your case, along with the three parts of the flute, our head joint, the long body, and the little foot joint, you should also find a cleaning rod. It's just a stick with a hole in the end, almost like a great big needle. Yours might be made out of metal. That's okay too, works the same way. You will need a nice thin piece of cloth. You can buy silk cloths that are specially made for swabbing out instruments, but an old t-shirt that you don't mind cutting up works just fine as well. Mine is triangular shaped and about this big. If it's too big, it's going to get stuck inside your flute. So you don't need something really, really big. You also don't want a really thick piece of fabric like flannel or fleece or anything like that. That absolutely is gonna get stuck inside your flute. And that's even if you can thread it through that hole, which is what we're going to do next. So this is why the triangular shaped cleaning rag works out so well. So I'm gonna take one of those corners, thread it through like a needle easier than threading a needle though. And when I'm cleaning out my head joint, I take one end of the rag and I cover the top part of my cleaning rod. That way it gets way up in the top part of the head joint and dries that out. Important to do this because as we blow into the flute, our breath condenses and your flute will be filled with moisture on the inside. If we had the whole flute, the body and the foot joint too, we would have to swab those out too. But we didn't use those today. So they're still dry on the inside. But swab it out really, really well. Twist it around. You kind of peek inside there, make sure it looks dry. I usually kind of stick my finger and make sure it feels dry. Mine does. And then I like to wipe all the fingerprints off mine. Flutes are so nice and shiny. We want to keep them that way. So I'm going to wipe off all the fingerprints and then carefully put it back in its case. Look carefully where the indentations on are in your case so that you don't put the flute in backwards or anything like that. So that's how mine sits in my case. And then your cleaning rod should also have a little bracket that holds it. Some of them are in this part. It just depends on what kind of flute case you have, what brand, everybody makes theirs a little differently. Mine fits up here, kind of wedges between there. And once I'm sure that nothing is going to hit up against my keys or up against any part of the flute tube, I can carefully shut my case. 
I usually shut my case with it sitting down on something like this. That way, I'm not gonna drop it. Speaking of shutting our case, Please don't try and put anything else except for the three parts of your flute and the cleaning rod in the case. If your cleaning rag is thin enough and you have some space between the joints, you might be able to fold it up in there gently but I don't recommend that. Better is if your flute has a case cover, again, some do, some don't, it is much better to put that rag in the case cover because, so let's think about it. We just dried out the inside of our flute with it. It's a little bit damp. I don't want that dampness in with my flute making the pads all damp and yucky. So much, much better if you have somewhere else to put your cleaning rag. That's a much better idea. And absolutely never put your pencil or your music or anything else in that case. Your cases are specially designed just to hold the flute and the cleaning rod. If you put anything else in there, it's gonna put undue pressure on all these keys. A lot of people think, well, it's metal. Metal's pretty strong. Nothing's gonna happen to it. The fact of it is, when I take out the body of my flute, all these keys and these long bars called rods actually can be bent very, very easily. They can be knocked out of adjustment really, really easily, and your flute won't play the way you need it to. So, You'll notice how I'm holding the body of the flute. We're gonna talk about this more in our next lesson, but I'm not gonna grab those rods or anything either because I don't want to accidentally bend them. So very carefully back in the case it goes. Closing my caref case carefully. Never force it shut. If it doesn't shut, Check and make sure something's not in the way. Again, you don't want to damage your flute by forcing the case shut when it's not in there quite correctly. Once it's in its case, it's definitely a lot safer, but you still need to be careful. Obviously, avoid dropping your case. It can be knocked, out, your flute can be knocked out of adjustment even when it's in its case. And avoid extreme temperatures. Musical instruments do not like very cold or very hot temperatures. So don't leave your instrument in the car. Even if it's in the case, make sure it goes along with you. Also, you know your car is not going to get broken into and someone steals your flute. That would be really, really unfortunate. So keep your flute inside with you at all times. If you're uncomfortable, your flute probably is too. So if it's too cold for you or too hot for you, it's too hot or too cold for your instrument too. So to wrap up, if you're sitting practicing, sitting straight, feet flat on the floor, shoulders away from your ears. If you're standing, feet about hip width apart, standing straight, good relaxed breaths, Tonguing every note, try some shorter notes first, some longer notes and work up and challenge yourself. See how long a note you can play this week. And always, always, always swap out your flute, wipe it down and keep it in, it, in its case when you are done with it. I hope you'll check out my lessons. I would love to work with you and see what you're doing. If you have any questions or you want to make sure that you're doing something right, please feel free to book even a short package of lessons so we can work together a little bit and get you started off right. It is much easier 
to start off with good habits than to have to relearn something later on. So if you would like individualized guidance, we can work together once a week, twice a week, every two weeks. Let's see what works best for your needs and your schedule. Remember, private lessons are great because they are tailor-made to your needs and your goals and your abilities. So I look forward to hearing from you soon. Please let me know if you have any questions. Shoot me a message. I can't wait to hear from you. Have a great week.